We begin our liturgy on the Sunday before Memorial Day in prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Kneeling, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured all for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. And now on the day of Pentecost, May 28, 2023, at St. Matthew's Episcopal Church in Spartanburg, please join in hymn 225, Hail the Festival Day. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The Holy Spirit inspires not only the faithful after Jesus' ascension, but throughout history as Moses, the elders, and the prophets in the camp bear witness in Numbers. A reading from the book of Numbers. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him, and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirits rested upon them, they prophesied. But they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. And the spirit rested on them. They among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent. And so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of the chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Let's read Psalm 104 in unison. O oh Lord, Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There among the ships, and there is that Leviathan which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all of his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. When the Holy Spirit comes upon the faithful, the effects are immediate, dramatic, and powerful. A reading from the Lessons of Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from the heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house they were sitting. Divided tongues, a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other language, as the Spirit gave them. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven, living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear 
each of us in our own native language, Parathenes, Medes, Elamites, the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the 11, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what has been spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit unto, upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, both men and women. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in heaven above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sh sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I speak to you now in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
May 28th, and gosh, what a typical May 28th it is. 82 degrees, not a cloud in the sky, a slight warm breeze coming in over the parking lot this morning. Or maybe not. <laughs> you know, but, but even on a, an uncommonly cold and wet day, every time we get to this point in the year, I have to confess, my mind really isn't in Spartanburg, okay? I, uh, I'm already sort of in beach mode. In fact, my family is down on the coast right now. Waves and warm ocean water, white sand, beaches, sitting underneath a, a beach umbrella, tomato sandwich in hand. Not yet, not yet, but, but soon, but soon. And you know, during the, the course of this last week, as I was thinking about this sermon and what to say to y'all, there were a lot of beach memories that actually came to mind. And in particular, I couldn't help but think about what it was like uh, when I was a child. I, I guess I'm at that age where every sermon is going to be sort of nostalgic at the beginning, okay? So, so humor me a little bit. Um, when I was about six or seven, uh, we had gotten rid of the house up at Crescent, and we started going to the Trade Winds Motel in Myrtle Beach. Some of my dad's cousins owned it, and so that was just where we went. And they had two things that I loved. A shuffleboard court, okay? Remember shuffleboard, big shuffleboard court out front? And behind was this fantastic pool. It was, it was wonderful. Although, pretty much like every pool, uh, it had that rope barrier, you know, with the little buoy things on it, at about the five-foot level. And, uh, and I remember this very, very clearly because I'm standing on the other end of the pool watching folks swim and dive. And I wanted my dad to teach me how to dive. But you know, that was down there on the other end of the pool, on the deep end. So I'm standing there looking into it when I feel what is definitely not a comforting hand between my shoulder blades. And all of a sudden, I am sailing out over the water and splashing about halfway out, okay? I'm about seven. I knew how to swim. I knew how to swim. Dad had taught us all how to swim. And I don't know if it was one of my cousins or one of my older brothers. One of them is watching right now in Columbia. I don't know if it was you. <laughs> Confession's good for the soul. He's going to come back. I was in college then. But in any case, I am splashing and floundering. And all of a sudden, this voice says, I'm right over here by the ladder, just swim to me. It was my dad. And so I, uh, I calmed down, and I swam over to my dad. And I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, son, if you can swim in five feet of water, you can swim in ten feet of water. Deep water is where you put your skills to work. Deep water is where you put your skills to work. Today is all about deep water. Today, in the life of the church, we celebrate Pentecost. In the life of a family, we celebrate a baptism. In the life of a couple of our individuals this morning, we celebrate EFM graduation. In the life of our nation, we gather for Memorial Day and honor the sacrifice of those who have given their lives in service of our country. See, today is not just a full day. Today is without question a day in deep water. A day when faith skills are surely needed. 
So first, Pentecost. Pentecost. Pentecost is the birthday of the church. But the reason all of those wonderfully named peoples were gathered in Jerusalem, and I'm going to go through the list because I just love the sound of it, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. The reasons they were all in the city that day is because Pentecost is the second of the great three Jewish feast. They were gathered for their faith. The three feasts are Passover, Pentecost, and Sukkot. Pentecost, it's also called the Feast of Weeks, is celebrated 50 days after the Passover. It's a harvest festival when the first fruits are offered up. By the way, this would be a good time for us to remember, particularly over the summer, to bring in those first fruits for us to distribute from our food pantry. But Pentecost also commemorates the giving of the Ten Commandments to Moses on Mount Sinai, the beginning of all Jewish law. Passover is intended to be more of a a family celebration. But today, well, today was a day when the people would come together to renew their connection to God and to one another, to recall those things that bound them together as a people. They would flock to Jerusalem to come into it together, from coming from every diverse place that the Jewish people had dispersed to. And they came to offer up a portion of, of their harvest to the poor. A way of thanking God for the bounty of the harvest and recognizing their responsibility as people of faith to give life and hope to those who might otherwise be forgotten. That's a faith skill. And it's that day When all of those different kinds of people are gathered, it's that day that God chooses to send the Holy Spirit. This is the day God says, by proclaiming Christ in every tongue of every nation, all of you different folks from different places who look different, who are truly different, You are all my children, equal in every way. And what I give to one of you, I give to all of you. Anything and everything is possible when filled with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Fire and tongues are powerful concepts. So is peace. And even more so is love. And we gather today to baptize because on this day, the twelve apostles baptized 3,000. Theologian N.T. Wright says of moments like this, what the Spirit will do when the Spirit comes is anybody's guess. One of the great minds of the faith. I don't know what's going to happen. But the Spirit does. And it's going to be extraordinary. In a moment, we'll baptize baby Braylon with water. And Father Paul will seal him with the Holy Spirit. Moments after that, we will anoint the hands of those who have completed their course of study in EFM. And then we will gather at this altar 
remembering those we honor on Memorial Day, and invoke the power of the Holy Spirit to consecrate bread and wine, making them into the body and blood of Christ. All of that means a simple thing. Today, we are in deep water. But that also means that when we are out in the world, living the life of a follower of Christ, we are in deep water. And that is where we put our skills to work. Because what the Spirit will do when the Spirit comes is anybody's guess. Hear now the words of Bishop Charles Duvall. Bishop Duvall, one-time rector of the Advent, Bishop of the Central Gulf Coast, retired, served here for years, came to St. Matthew's for confirmation. Bishop Duvall died not of COVID, but during COVID. And this was what he would say on this day. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the fire and kindle in our hearts a love of the Lord Jesus. Come as the dove and bring to our lives the peace of God. Come as the wind and blow away the clouds of doubt and uncertainty which would keep us from following Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. I'll come up. All right. Let's bring the little man up here. Bell. And Ben, if you'll come here. Katie. And here, stand right here. Now the most important question, Mama, Grandmama, y'all can see well, right? Okay. All right. You have your booklets ready? The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present... Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? Amen. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Amen. Let's ask that one again. <laughs> A little enthusiasm, okay? Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept Him as your Savior? Do you put your whole trust in His grace and love? Do you promise to follow and obey Him as your Lord? Will you who witness these vows... Do all in your power to support this child in his life in Christ. We will. Standing, let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver him, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Open his heart to your grace and truth. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Fill him with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Keep him in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Teach him to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send him into the world and witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring him to the fullness of your peace and your glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all those who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt, and into the land of promise. In it your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. <gasps> okay, buddy. Hey. Oh, goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. Okay. Oh, all right. Name this child. It's okay. Okay. Braden Donald Jacob, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Goodness. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit, you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and raised him to the new life of grace. Sustain him, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give him an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. 
Braylon. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Now we give this to you, and it's sort of a tradition to burn that on the anniversary of his baptism. Okay? And I'm not sure that Braylon's going to enjoy this part as much as I do. Okay, so put him right here. Oh, goodness, it's okay, bud. It's okay. It's okay. Here, you want to try this? No? <laughs> Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive the the It's okay. Can y'all see him? Can you hear him? Okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, oh, goodness. Goodness gracious. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Here, y'all can go back to your seats. You can blow it out. Thank you, Andy. Please be seated. Apparently, what Braylon wanted was grandmama. <laughs> <laughs> Will our EFM graduates come forward? And actually, it would be wonderful to have the entire EFM class up here. And if I could get our two graduates to stand on either side of the font. All EFM graduates would be welcome up here. Now we do this in part for you all to see how important in the life of this parish education for ministry has been. When you look up here, you'll see folks involved in every aspect of the life of St. Matthews. And the truth is, this is just a portion of the folks that have been through the program. People of God, by the Holy Spirit, all who believe and are baptized receive a ministry to serve God. Christ Jesus our Lord called us to love and serve the people with whom we live and work. Today we celebrate with these graduates of education for ministry. We celebrate the process and growth, these intentional years in the community of EFM and the study of scripture, church history, and theology have brought them. They have joined their hearts and voices with all whom after reflecting on living out their beliefs in their daily lives, purposely, purposefully seek where God is calling them to minister. We bless their efforts and pray for the Spirit to empower them to fulfill their ministry. As a result of your participation in EFM, do you have a more comprehensive understanding of God, of God's Word, and of the faith and teaching of the church? I do. Do you see more clearly the continuing story of God's people and your place in that history? I do. As baptized Christians, you are already committed to ministry. You have given yourselves to four years of intensive study and exploration in order to more clearly identify and carry out that ministry. We use this knowledge and these skills to respond to the world in which you live as a more effective minister. Holy and living God, you call women and men to serve in this world. Equip Heather and Jackie for their ministry. 
and give to your servants the gift of grace they will need. Amen. May the Holy Spirit guide and strengthen you, that in this and all things may you may do God's will in furthering his kingdom, to serve him and to lead others into a deeper commitment to their baptismal vows. Amen. In the name of God, I commend you to this ministry and pledge our prayers, encouragement, and support. Will you, as members of EFM, pledge your continuing support to these graduates? We will. Let us pray. Almighty God, look with favor upon these graduates who have now reaffirmed their commitment to follow Christ and to serve in his name. Give them courage, patience, and vision, and strengthen us all in our vocation of witness to the world and service to others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I'm actually going to ask y'all to pass your diplomas off to someone nearby because we really don't want you to get oil all over them. Uh, holy oil, although they are from the University of the South Sewanee, so they are a blessed <laughs> item already. <laughs> Absolutely. The Sewanee Tigers. Heather, may your hands be the hands of Christ in the lives of all you encounter. Amen. Jackie, may your hands be the hands of Christ in the lives of all you encounter. Amen. Now, if everyone would stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Uh, if you are new to St. Matthew's, if you're visiting today, welcome. We're glad you're here. Uh, there should be a card somewhere nearby in the pew rack. Please fill that out, put it in the offering plate, give it to one of our ushers, give it to Father Paul or to me so we can welcome you and help you be a part of our family. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts with thanksgiving.
You have received us as your sons and daughters, made us citizens of your kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrifice for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. sisters and brothers, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Allah, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Now, my beloved, if you would turn to the inside covers of your books of common prayer. Grace and Mark, we send you forth to share communion this week with Juanita Faxton and Catherine. We send you forth to share communion this week with Robin. May may you carry the prayers of all of us as you take the sacrament of Christ's presence. May those who receive it from you be strengthened and encouraged in that community we have together in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the healing name of Jesus, and with the compassionate embrace of the family of St. Matthews, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts of our Lord's spiritual body and blood, that those to whom you go may experience with us the majesty and the mystery of his presence through the sharing of the wafer and the cup. May the one bread and the one wine call us into blinding awareness of our unity. Nothing, whether it be distance, illness, or age, can ever separate us from the knowledge of our personal worth and our oneness in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, my beloved, let us pray, saying together, Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now, and abide with you forever. Amen. And now let us stand and sing our hymn for going forth. We know that Christ is raised and dies no more.
Announcements from the congregation. And this is short. We have one more day that hasn't been taken for lemonade on the lawn, and it's August 27th. So if you're available on August 27th for this ministry, please let me know. Thank you. Are we having it today? No. No? No. We no? Start till next ah, because it would be hot chocolate on the lawn if we were having it today. <laughs> it wouldn't have to be on the lawn either. <laughs> That's true. Um, the, uh, you, you might have noticed that we were making some real progress on the kitchen and, uh, and it should be in place and operational very, very soon. The appliance is all delivered, and it's really looking good in there. Uh, a little bit of an update on fine arts prep. Everything's been approved uh, from the diocese. Uh, uh, the most important part, the special exemption for them to operate here has been approved by the city, but there's still a number of sort of hoops that have to be jumped through uh, with the Department of Transportation. Now, the Department of Transportation has approved it, um, the Office of School Facilities and then the, school, and then the uh, Planning Office of the city is still looking at things. Um, it is our profound prayer that they open the beginning of September. Uh, a little bit late by regular standards, but it should be fine because they're in a, a year-round calendar. Uh, so please uh, keep Fine Arts Prep and its students and teachers in your prayers, uh, and we should know something definitive in the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's a wonderful opportunity for lots of children. It's consistent with the ministry of St. Matthew's, and it's a, an offering that we can make for the good of the larger community, making a difference in children's lives. Um, back before COVID, one of the things that we used to do with our food pantry was accept prayer requests that would then be offered up on Wednesdays. Uh, I spoke to the folks that do the intake for the food pantry uh, this past Wednesday, and they're going to start collecting those prayers again, and they will be offered up on Wednesdays at the healing service. So again, an opportunity to respond to the needs of the community. And thank you to the folks that are working uh, on the garden, the raised bed garden. Uh, all of those things will be used, those fresh vegetables, to supplement what we're able to provide. I'm talking about the food pantry because I was looking at the numbers and we're actually looking at perhaps as many as 15,000 people this year that come to us, an extraordinary increase over the last few years. So this year, if you've got some fresh vegetables, if you have something you want to donate, just not just the canned goods, please consider bringing those. If you bring vegetables, uh, if you would, put them in Ziploc bags so that we can give them out uh, um, uh, to individual families that come in. It'd be wonderful to have like a bushel of tomatoes dropped off. It'd be better, though, if those <laughs> bushel of tomatoes were packaged up with just a few to each uh, uh, serving. Any other announcements? Father Paul, or pardon me, Pat. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 Thank you.